Listen, y'all, I curled this wig myself. It's still kind of... I'm gonna send it to Gabby, little zhuzh for me. So for now, if it looks a little, you know, whatever, just give us some grace. So I'm going to put timestamps below, but in today's video, we're going to be talking about the new Make It Matte from Black Girl Sunscreen. We're going to be talking about a tinted mineral sunscreen primer hybrid kind of thing from Tarte that I was like low key, like I bought this expecting to be rolling my eyes, but I'm not mad. <laughs> and then I also picked up a balm from Super Goop as well as a sunscreen stick from Shiseido. And I also picked up this Safe Recipe Mineral Sunscreen. I have lots of sunscreen videos here on this channel. Make sure you check them out. Now when it comes to sunscreen, I believe that not only is there a sunscreen out there for everyone, regardless of your skin type, um, the climate where you live, the season where it is, you know, your age, whatever, there is a sunscreen out there for you. But I also believe that you need to have more than one type of sunscreen because we do so many things. You know, like right now, I have on a particular sunscreen because I'm here chilling with my makeup on, but I would probably wear a different sunscreen if I was going to the gym and gonna be sweating, and then I would probably wear a different uh, sunscreen if I was at the beach, you know, just chilling and, you know, letting my, my skin be all out. Different sunscreens for different reasons, and that's why I'm glad that, you know, we have the, the lineup that we have. Now, first up, the Black Girl Sunscreen Make It Matte. Now, as soon as I heard that Black Girl Sunscreen was coming out with a matte sunscreen, I was extremely happy because although the original formula was something that I really liked, it blended nicely into the skin, it felt moisturizing, it looked good, um, it checked off so many points that I look for in a sunscreen, but it was more of a body sunscreen for me because I have oily skin and it was a little too heavy for me to wear on my face. Um, and then for me, if I'm gonna wear body sunscreen, I need something like this big because like I'm really slathering that all over. So I was glad to see that this one um, came out on the market. Now this is obviously for face. I mean, you could get away with putting it on your body if you wanted to, but at $21.99 for 1.7 fluid ounces, you would go through this very quickly if you tried to put this on your body. I would just put this on your face your ears, and then your neck and chest. But me, I put my body sunscreen on my neck and chest because body sunscreen is less expensive. But anyway, let's talk about this sunscreen. Now, here's the thing. It's called Make It Matte, but it does not give you a completely matte, like flat matte finish, right? Now, I would argue with you, you gotta chill with some of the overly matte textures and finishes in your routine. If you have oily skin, well, if you have dry skin, you probably run away from anything that says matte anyway. But I find that people with oily skin do tend to overdo it with the matte. And sometimes what can happen is if you're doing the most to zap the oil, what happens is you're actually being counterproductive and your skin produces more oil because it's like, what the heck is going on here? She keeps depleting, he or she keeps depleting all of my oil. So I gotta make more because I don't know what's going on. So that's essentially what your skin does. This has more of a satin, matte, beautiful finish to it. Um, I've tried it out a couple of different times, a couple of different ways, um, with makeup, without makeup at the gym, you know, yada, yada, yada. I want to compare it to Super Goop Unseen, right? But <laughs> I don't, I no longer have the Super Goop Unseen sunscreen here. Uh, but what I do have is the Kroger sunscreen, which I did a video on when I had both the Kroger and the Super Goop, and I was kind of a dupe for the Unseen. Um, it's very similar. So when you pu when you pump it out, you're gonna feel that it may look and feel oily. Um, and it's gonna feel very oily on your skin. And at first you might be like, I don't know about this, cause it said matte, but it's feeling oily and I don't know. But it's got a really nice, like almost like, I don't know if there's silicones in here. Let me look at the ingredients. Yes, there are um, silicones in here. And listen, let me tell y'all from now, <laughs> There's a lot of misconceptions about ingredients and, and so on and so forth. Silicones are not inherently bad. Um, they're not gonna clog your pores. It's, it's almost impossible for a silicone to clog your pores just because of the, due to the nature of a silicone. I'll leave some information linked below where you can read more about silicones. They're not inherently bad because you know some people may have a 
Anyway, look in the description box. So in, in this type of formula, it's not, you're not gonna get a completely blurring, like blurred out, you won't be able to see your pores kind of look to, to your skin but you do kind of have like a slight feel like that, which is which is really nice. It feels oily, but as, as it settles and as you wear it throughout the day, it feels like there's nothing on. Now, mind you, it is February in New York City. Um, it, it's actually gotten really cold. Before I was like, oh, we're having a mild winter, but no, it's really cold. Um, so I don't know how this would perform on my oily skin in the summertime. I would assume just by how it feels and my experiences, my, my experiences with other products that feel like a similar texture, I think it might be fine for me in the summertime, um, but I can see myself not wanting that texture on my skin in the summer, if that makes sense. So this might be something that is good for me for most of the year, except for maybe when it gets really hot and humid here in New York in the summer. Now this is a chemical sunscreen. It does not contain oxybenzone or oxinoxate. Um, oxybenzone, usually when people have a problem with chemical sunscreens, a lot of times oxybenzone might be the culprit. It's not the only culprit, um, but one way to kind of figure out like, okay, is this gonna be right for me? Is it not gonna be right for me? As with all skincare, do a patch test. Don't just slap products on your face and then crush your fingers and hope that it is going to do well. That's dumb. <laughs> So do a patch test before you try any new products. Now, now that said, I actually enjoyed using this product. It looked, it worked really nicely with um, the different moisturizers that I tend to use in my routine. Um, it worked well with my oily skin, albeit we are in winter. Uh, it looked really nice with my makeup. Um, it, 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 it did the things that it said it would do. Now, this is fragrance free, um, and it's also water resistant up to 80 minutes. Now. With it being fragrance-free, now remember, something can be fragrance-free and still have a scent to it. Fragrance-free means that there are no components in the product that are only there to make the product smell good. And for more of that, make sure you check out my post on fragrance in skincare. I'll link it below. Um, and water resist, there's no sunscreen is going to be waterproof. Um, and even though it says it's water resistant, if you jump in the pool, you sweat profusely, I don't know, you walk down the street and somebody turns the fire hydrant on or something, you know, towel off and then reapply your sunscreen. Um, if you're someone where you, you know, you really know for sure that any product that you've tried that has coconut oil in it is just not for you, then this might not be for you either. Like I mentioned before, anytime you try anything new, you always want to do a patch test um, to make sure there's no adverse reactions. I could reapply it without it feeling very heavy on my skin. Now, the only time I would reapply a sunscreen like this, a gel, a lotion, or anything like that, is if I'm not wearing makeup. If I'm wearing makeup, I'll use a Peter Thomas Roth Mineral Sunscreen Powder to, you know, reapply my sunscreen. Um, I would not use this to put over makeup. Uh, just because the oils in it might break down your makeup and it, it, may, it may not be a nice, you know, situation. Have you tried Black Girl Make It Matte Sunscreen? Let me know in the comments below. Um, it's out of stock when I, as of me filming this, but I'll link where you can get it on Target and on the Black Girl Sunscreen website. Um, and you know, maybe put up a notification or something if you want to get it and then when it gets back in stock, you can pick it up. So next up, the Super Goop Cloud 9 100% Mineral Sun Balm. Now, I gotta tip my hat to Super Goop because if there's one thing they're gonna do is they're gonna innovate the mess out of some sunscreen and they're gonna come up with a sunscreen for every situation which I like because a sunscreen definitely tends to be one of those categories of skincare that, that in the past has been kind of boring. Um, it's been kind of like something where it's like, ah, all right, I'll put it on, but I don't necessarily enjoy it. What I do like is that they do make sunscreen products that people can enjoy. Like they make some the glow screen, they make the um, balm with the glow and the dewiness and, and they, they do it all. Now do you have to spend that much on the sunscreen? That's gonna depend on your pockets, but this stuff I thought was really cool. Now it's not gonna be for everyone and it's not gonna be for every situation, but I'm glad that they thought of it. So this is a bomb. Let me actually read from. Okay, so the official description, this is a super nourishing 100% mineral multi-purpose sun balm for a spot soothing dry or cracked skin with broad spectrum SPF 40 
uh, UV protection. This all-in-one deeply conditioning face and body balm melts into the skin and helps provide hydration relief for dry, flaky, and irritated spots caused by extreme climates, altitudes, or face coverings. Formulated with a skin-boosting blend of clean ingredients, it helps nourish skin while providing essential all year round SPF uh, protection. Um, I would probably, like I was trying to figure out like what could I compare this to. Now this doesn't have petrolatum in it, not that I'm seeing from like scanning this. This may, this is not going to have like the same base ingredients or the same ingredients as like a CeraVe healing ointment or the Aquaphor, um, you know, ointment. Um, or even, you know, regular Vaseline petroleum jelly. Um, but I can, it's kind of in that same category, right? So like, hopefully that makes sense because I'm not saying that this is the same thing as Vaseline or healing ointment or whatever, but it's like in that category. And this of course has, um, you know, the SPF 40 mineral sunscreen. It's got zinc and um, titanium dioxide in it. I actually really enjoyed this. This is 26 bucks. You get one ounce um this is something where like if you're you know wearing your mask for you know hours on end throughout the day and you're noticing that you're getting a little bit of friction from the mask um this is something that you can put on your on your face after you know you've done all your skincare and everything you can put a um a layer of this on your face especially in the areas where you might have the most friction from the mask um and what it'll do is it'll kind of make a protective barrier between your skin and the mask and then this is great because it also has sunscreen in it. Now here's the thing. You could do exactly that with like Aquaphor or the CeraVe healing ointment. You know, you would put your sunscreen on and then put those on top. Um, but if you're someone where you're like, you know what, I, I want something that has a sunscreen in it also. I have put this on all over my face, like behind my ears and on my neck and you know, a little bit down my chest um, before. And although it's balmy and it's still like, even as you wear it throughout the day, it still has like that little balmy kind of like feel to it. It didn't, like my skin didn't feel heavy, you know, I have oily skin. It is winter time, I probably wouldn't have the same experience when it gets warmer out. Um, but I did like that it didn't feel heavy on my skin, although to the touch you can feel that it felt a little balmy. Um, this is not going to be something that's for everyone. But like I said, I think like Super Goop is a very innovative um, sunscreen brand and that they come up with sunscreens for everyone. Not every single Sunday. I've tried some Super Goop sunscreens and I was like, ooh, no, this is not for me. But this one I thought was kind of really cool. This is something you could throw in your purse. Um, you can probably even use this like on your hands, like on, you know, if you have like really dry cuticles and you've got that extra sunscreen protection. Not a necessity, but I'm like, you know what? I want to try as many different types of sunscreens as, you know, I is humanly and financially possible here on this channel. So you guys have options. So that's where that came in. And then for the next sunscreen that I picked up that's, you know, kind of new on the market, the Shiseido. Um, clear sunscreen stick SPF 50 plus. Um, this is a chemical sunscreen. Now, one thing I find about Shiseido, this is probably maybe like a second or third in life um, Shiseido sunscreen that I've tried. I've always, I've never remembered not liking any of the Shiseido sunscreens I've tried. I haven't tried them all, but the ones I have tried, you know, I liked. But they're real good for giving you a little tiny amount for a big dollar. <laughs> Uh, price tag, right? So again, not for everyone, but these sunscreen sticks can be really convenient. Um, this is something that you can kind of like, if you have exposed skin in your, your part, um, if you're someone who, you know, you're bald or you have balding spots, this is something that you can kind of, you know, and I talked about sunscreen sprays for your scalp as well in other videos if you want to check that out. Um, but this is something that you can easily like just apply you know, get it on your skin and then rub it in. Similar to the Super Goop, it does have like that balmy kind of feel to it. I've rubbed this all over my face and, you know, got it behind my ears and, you know, my neck and chest and everything. And I didn't feel anything throughout the day. You touch it, you might feel a little balminess, but much like the Super Goop, throughout the day, I didn't, it didn't feel heavy on my skin. It didn't make me extra oily. I have oily skin. It's winter time. Not so sure that I would have the same experience in the summer with it, but this wasn't bad. Um, there's a slight, there's a slight fragrance to this. 
like a clean scent, like crisp, kind of clean kind of scent. I can't put my finger on what exactly it smells like. It's not very overpowering. As a matter of fact, none of these sunscreens here have a very overpowering scent. Not bad. This is not gonna be for something for everyone. And it's not completely innovative because you can get a sunscreen stick, you know, a bigger size for less money. Um, brands like Neutrogena, um, even even like Walgreens and CVS, like the in-store brands make sunscreen sticks that are pretty decent as well. So you don't necessarily need to have this one, but you know, I know I got some bougie people out there <laughs> watching who might, you know, want something in a different price range. So I try to bring as many options as possible on this channel. The Tarte 12 hour primer, BB tint, okay, let me say that again. The Tarte BB tinted treatment primer, broad spectrum SPF 30. So this is a hybrid product. So the sunscreen that's in it is um, titanium dioxide and zinc oxide, so it's mineral. Um, but this is also, you know, this can act as a primer, it can act as makeup, like a tinted kind of makeup kind of thing. Now, let me tell you something. As someone who, before I took this deep dive into skincare, we've always talked about skincare on this channel, but I used to also talk about makeup and, you know, other stuff here, right? Tarte <laughs> was a brand where I was like, you know what? I ain't messing with y'all. <laughs> y'all stay coming up with these ashy shades. I remember one of their um, launches maybe a year or two ago where they actually had, you know, more of the um, shades, you know, more of a shade range. I was like, okay, let me try it out. And it was like, still like, just... Nonetheless, I saw this and I'm like, all right. I picked it up because they, they had a lot of good things going for it. It's, um, you know, mineral sunscreen. You know, I like to give you guys options. It also contains iron oxides. There was a study that showed that, you know, having a sunscreen and, you know, either the sunscreen containing iron oxides or you adding your iron oxides by putting like foundation or something on top of your sunscreen um, could really help with pigmentation. I actually spoke to one of the dermatologists who were a part of the study. So you can watch that video if you want some more information. Um, but I was expecting this to look, to make me look like a ghost face killer. Oh, not even because of the titanium dioxide, but because of whatever pigments that Tarte seems to like think that, you know, people of color come in. I can't be mad at this one. Now this particular shade is too warm and too dark for me. I'm not even sure if they have a shade match for me. So this only comes in nine shades. So here's the thing with shade range and products that are lighter coverage, like a tinted moisturizer, BB cream. A lot of times they don't, the brand doesn't need to have like as vast of a shade range as if like they were selling like a medium or full coverage foundation. Cause a medium or full coverage foundation, if your undertones and the shade is wrong, it's going to tell on you. When something's a lighter coverage, it can actually be more flexible, so it can work for a number of skin tones, whereas something that's fuller coverage won't have that flexibility. Hopefully I'm making sense to you. Leave me a comment below if I'm making sense to you. Now, here's the thing. So this only has nine shades, <laughs> which I'm like, probably add a couple. This is, this is not something that is going to need 40 shades. I can tell you that right off the bat. A BB cream tinted moisturizer line is probably not going to need 40 shades. If the brand does their stuff right, they can probably, you know, get a good number of skin tones without that many, you know, shades in a lighter coverage tinted moisturizer or BB cream, right? So I don't think, I do wonder if this rich shade might have been closer because mahogany is the deepest shade that this comes in alone. I don't think this is gonna work with people who are who have very rich complexions. It, it could probably work as a primer and you're probably gonna have to put makeup on on top of it. Now that said, I was surprised that this didn't make me look dead. Now it is not my shade, again, too dark and too warm for me. Um, but let's let's talk, let's go through my notes here. So this really blurs your pores, right? Like really, blurs your pores to the point where I felt it blurred the pores too much. Like, <laughs> there's a thing where it's like, you know, yeah, you know, make me look like me, but better. This was like severe Instagram filter looking in person. And I'm like, I don't 
oh, about that. Even wearing it through the day as like you would think like some natural oil breakthrough would kind of help to, you know, make it not look so severe. Like, nah, this thing was like, nope, we ain't showing no pores. And I don't necessarily think that's a great look for everyone. It wasn't a good look for me at least, but you know, you guys have your own, you know, aesthetics and stuff that you like. So, um, but I do think that this is, um, not the best tinted mineral sunscreen I've ever tried, but it's probably higher up on the list. Now for me to put this higher up on the list says way more about <laughs> the tinted mineral sunscreen options out there than anything else, because if this is probably one of the better ones, then, you know, I would say one of the best tinted mineral, like uh, hybrid makeup and, and sunscreen product is um, the Ilia one, which I've done a review on, so make sure you check that out. Um, but I do think that if you got something like this, you could hook it up really nicely. Um, you can put like an, a liquid illuminator on first, you know, not all over, but maybe, you know, some spots where the sun would naturally hit your face, like maybe the tops of your cheeks, you know, down the bridge of your nose, you know, those, those kind of areas, the bowl of your lips. And then you put this on, on top of it. Now, here's the thing. If you're not going to put on enough, where it's covering, you know, getting into the hairline, behind the ears. I wouldn't put a tinted moisturizer behind the ears and the neck, so you would probably want to put on your regular moisture sunscreen before you put this on, because I just see this getting messy. If you're gonna, like, I don't know. If you do that, let me know, because I would like to know how you keep that clean. When you layer sunscreen, you're not getting, like, double the protection. So, like, if you put on, um, this is a 30, so if you put this on on top of your SPF 30 moisturizer, you're not getting a 60, you're getting a 30. Because <laughs> you're gonna get the, the SPF of whatever the highest SPF was. They don't automatically just, you know, combine to make like a big Megatron, right, of sunscreen. Um, but when you layer sunscreen like that, you are more likely to get every inch of, or mostly every inch of your face. So if you maybe you missed a spot with your um, sunscreen moisturizer, but then you put this on top and then you got, you know, you know what I mean? Like you get that extra, um, that area that you might've missed. Um, and then it also works nicely with makeup on top. Now I tried that in the sense of does the formula work with my foundation formula? And the answer to that was yes. Did the color work though? No, because this is already too dark and too red for me. So a lot of that was like just, you know, seeping through whatever I put on top. But theoretically, if this is closer to your skin color um, and you wanted to put makeup on top, this could work really nicely as a primer. If you like that really matte, super blurred, I'm a in-person Instagram filter kind of look, then, you know, go for it. Now, the last one I'm just gonna talk about really quickly. I didn't even bring that one sunscreen in here to, to talk about it, but I got my notes. And it's just gonna be real quick because this one was like a tragic. <laughs> so it's the Safe Recipe uh, Mineral Sunscreen. The name, the full name and all that stuff will be on the screen and in the description. So I picked this up because either someone left a comment or they DM me or something and they said, can you try this? I looked at it, the price was all right. So I was like, all right, let me try it out. Um, got it off of Amazon. It's lightweight, like very lightweight to the feel but it feels extremely moisturizing. I really like that about it. Um, it has a natural finish, so it's not gonna be matte, but it's not gonna be dewy. It's gonna look like your skin, like how your skin has that um, natural finish to it. Um, it blends it nicely into the skin, again, so it's not like that thick paste that like you feel like you have to rub in. It did, you know, rub in really nicely into the skin, but that cast is nasty. It is very noticeable. When you first put it on, it's noticeable, but then when it like settles, it's even more noticeable. And then the finish <laughs> looks a little like dry. So it's almost as if you put a uh, white powder on your face is what this looks like when all is said and done. I would not, like, I don't even know how, like maybe you could put some makeup on over this to, to make it work. Um, definitely don't do no flash photography <laughs> if you got that on. Um, it, it felt, it did feel nice on the skin. It felt like there was nothing on, but the, the, the look of it was just very, like, extremely 
not good. <laughs> All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you wanna know my thoughts on other sunscreens, definitely check out my other playlist. If you like wanna know if I've covered a particular sunscreen, just in your YouTube search box, put Style and Beauty Doctor and the name of the sunscreen, and if I've tried it, it'll come up. You know, you can check it in the description box. Um, what I've done with some of the previous videos where I think I'm kind of up to date with this is I put timestamps on some of the older videos so that you can kind of go through, you know, where pinpoint in the video. And I've definitely done that for this video. So follow me on social. The links will be in the description box. And I will see you fine folks in my next video. Bye, guys.